Hey, y'all, uh, Ryan, how's it going? Um, Augustus uh, here. Uh, we got some news, breaking news. Um, Kim Jong-un, uh, yeah, he's no longer here with us. Uh, the president of North Korea. Um, now, you know, first of all, uh, I just want to say, don't panic, all right? Um, this gentleman was a big deal. And um, what's going on right now with him, uh, with his family and, you know, with the government because of his passing, that's, you know, it's going to be a big deal. But let's at least mourn the man first. Let's mourn him first. Um, we know that what's going to transpire from this could be either very good or very bad, but let's focus on that after we mourn them first. Um, first of all, I would like to say Kim Jong-un was a uh, remarkable person. He was a remarkable gentleman. Uh, he was a stand-up guy. He was young, very smart, very ambitious. And um, he, he, he was very, uh, very poised, not just for his age, but for his level of power. Um, you don't really see too many people at that age and, you know, with that level of youth um, making, making mature decisions, you know, uh, not using their power when they clearly can you know, that shows a great degree of uh, humility, not what most people, you know, most people say, uh, I don't mean to brag and think that that makes them humble, you know. Uh, no, that's, no, this was real humility. This guy had a lot of power and he could have used it, but he chose not to. And if you ask me, I believe that, um, that was a real testament of his level of maturity and uh, wisdom and, once again, humility. So uh, let's, let's get into some things on his life uh, before we start, you know, getting into uh, what might happen. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. Um, before we, get, before we dig into this, I do want to put out there, um, when Kim Jong-un got into office, a lot of people were nervous. For lack of better words, people were nervous when he uh, came in. The reason why is because you didn't, it wasn't every day where you gave someone that young that kind of power. He was, he, uh, he died at 36. Um. He came in, let me see, he came in a little earlier. He came in around 2012, so that means that he was around, uh, let me see, 2012. Yeah, he was around his uh, early 30s, early 30s when he came in. And um, actually, late 20s, late 20s when he came in. So, and I'm not even sure if he came in at 2012. But that's that's big business. That's big business. Giving that much power to a gentleman that young. And um, let's let, let's dig into these uh, into this article on uh, the weapons testing. All right, very big deal. Uh, made a lot of people nervous. This is on Biography.com. You can look it up. Under Kim Jong-un's authority, North Korea continued its weapons testing program through agreeing in February 2012 to halt nuclear testing and to ces uh, cessation on long-range missile launching. In April 20, uh, 2012, the country launched a satellite that fell shortly after takeoff. Then, in December of the same year, the government launched a long-range rocket that put a satellite in orbit. The U.S. government believed that these launches were meant to cover up work and testing on a ballistic missile technology. Okay, that's um, that, that's nerve-wracking. That's nerve-wracking. 
when you're talking about someone that young and, and you're talking about testing like that, uh, that's nerve wracking. But he, he, being the remarkable young man that he was, he, uh, he stood up to the test and uh, he was very humble, very poised, very wise with his decisions. And he didn't just use or usurp power just because he had it. Um, it would have been a real shame to have to go to war with someone just because their president was young and ambitious, but lacked wisdom, lacked common sense. That would have, that would have been a shame. That would have been a lot of unnecessary blood. And North Korea's uh, uh, politics, uh, the people that really put him in the office would have been the blame for putting him in office, you know. But, of course, uh, the, the, the contrary occurred. And um, he handled things very well, very well. Um, here's a... Here's a um, a interesting excerpt from this article. U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis, Mad Dog, if you know about him, admitted that the test missile soared higher, frankly, than any previous shot they have taken and confirmed that North Korea was now capable of reaching any location on the planet with a strike. The launch drew swift condemnation from Japan and South Korea, while President Trump Seriously noted, we will take care of it. Like I said, this guy knew how to rattle nerves. He knew how to rattle nerves, but and and I, I don't want to spoil the uh, better part of this article, uh, but in the same way that his position rattled many nerves. Um, he knew how to calm those nerves in person. He knew how to calm those nerves once you got to speak with them and you got to see his side of things, his perspective. Um, it's, it's, it's very interesting, but he, he's in office and us, America, we bring in office a bully. Now, let's get this out the way. President Trump isn't necessarily a bully, politically uh, speaking, but many could say that he was a bully on Wall Street. Um, reason why is because it's survival of the fittest on Wall Street. Uh, politics isn't necessarily survival of the fittest. Politics is more so uh, negotiation, delegation. Uh, it's more so poker than it is checkers. Uh, and business is more so checkers than it is chess. So it, it's, it's President Trump isn't necessarily bullying his way into politics. Let's get that out the way. But we have seen him do some bully, uh, bully like things uh, in office, even. And it could resemble his uh, work on Wall Street, you know. So out of all times, we get a bully for president while Kim Jong-un was in North Korea and had so much power at such a young age. We, we get a bully to sit at a table across from him. And fortunately, God willing, uh, everything went well. Everything went well. Did they have the remarks? Of course. They're going to have their remarks towards each other. But whenever they spoke, they always had some form of productivity when they left the meeting, their meetings. And Trump's whole idea, his whole aim, every time he would meet with uh, any, any government, really, is financial gain. Financial gain. If he could go into a boardroom, any boardroom, political wherever 
and come out with a financial gain, especially for the country, uh, he will see it as a win, see. And there were uh, there were a number, not too many, but a number of reports where America did walk out with financial gain and trade was secured between North Korea and America. And first off, uh, for those that don't understand, North Korea and South Korea is like saying uh, night and day. It's like saying peanut butter and jelly. They may go well together, but they're completely different. They come from different, you know, sources. So, uh, for North Korea to be as old school, as militant as they are, in comparison to the more conservative South Korea, um, dealing with President Trump, you would think that there would be more bickering, there would be more uh, fighting words. But somehow, some way, the fact that both of them had the militant mentality and the mental and the uh, militant mindset, it allowed them to come to some kind of agreement. See, and this happened from time and time again between uh, President John Un and America. This shows his level of maturity, his level of rhetoric he was very and he was very poised uh, they said that he made sure it was it was very important to him and very cultural to him to make sure that he smiled everywhere that he went and of course anyone in politics could see the, poli- the politics behind that but nevertheless it showed his level of uh, comfort when he was working for him to have such a standard for himself and to bring his culture into the the standards that he has regardless of how things are going uh, Xi Jinping you don't see him smiling everywhere he goes you know uh, Putin you don't see him smiling period really you, you don't see Putin really smiling but the point is North Korea President Kim Jong-un he was a wise young man he died at uh, 36 that was the uh, age that he died at if I haven't uh, put that out there already but this is uh, this is a big deal this is a big deal um Before I move on, because, you know, there's more in this article that I would like to share. I would like to put out there the fact that um, he came from a, um, they they said that heart uh, issues were uh, genetic. They said that he kind of inherited that. They said his father died recently uh, in uh, 2011 from uh, a heart attack. So they say that, you know, those things are genetic, uh, hereditary. Um, for those uh, that don't know, he passed from heart issues, and it was on the operating table that he actually passed. Um, very unfortunate. And of course, someone else is going to have to come into office. But like I said, let's mourn the man first. Let's let's focus on let's celebrate his victories before we just move on to that. Um, he had a meeting with Putin, with Vladimir Putin, and um, uh, quoting from the article, no official agreements came out of the engagement with Putin, though Kim described their talk as very meaningful. Two terms, two words, very meaningful. I think that's interesting. I think that uh, deserves attention. Now, for someone that puts it in their efforts to ensure that they are always smiling whenever they 
appear in public, whenever a camera's on them, whenever they meet with someone. For them to have that kind of poise and to portray that kind of poise in their appearance, I would reckon that they will put out the same effort concerning their words as well. Saying that to say this, I believe, this is me, that this discussion between Putin got a little intense. So when you ask Putin how the meeting went, he might not have held back so much, but President John Un, yeah, he, uh, he 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 went the optimist route, the modest route on this one. Very meaningful. Yeah, they had words. Um, I believe one great reason for that is because these guys are nuclear giants. Or were um, Russia? Uh, I forgot the exact name for the missile that they have hidden, but it's by far the most advanced at the time of the reporting of um, that missile. It was the most advanced. It was the most deadly. It, it was the most dangerous. The most catastrophic. It was apocalypse. capped into mercury that's what it was so oh yeah and by the way they named the missile after the, uh, the devil I forgot the name of it it's not it's not Lucifer but it's it's Baphomet one of those names that's that's the name of their missile that's Russia South Korea wasn't too far behind them Let's see and no I'm sorry not South Korea North Korea sorry about that North Korea wasn't too far behind them that's a that's a big deal that's a big deal so for President Jong Un and President Putin to be discussing terms and there's so much power between both of them you know things are going to get intense you want you want both of these guys to be as easy, as calm, as possible. That's the day that you don't serve them coffee. You serve them tea on the day of that meeting. See? Um, there were similar bouts, similar uh, discussions or remarks uh, between President Jong Un and President Trump or North Korea and the US concerning these missiles. But like I said, once they spoke in person, they put it all behind them. It was it was very very remarkable and impressive to see how they could be, you know, just just barking on each other when they're in their own country and when reporters ask them and these reporters are really, you know, uh, playing messenger but once they come you know in person and they speak to each other there's a respect level where it's okay wow I see I see barking on this guy wasn't really necessary a kind of a kind of kind of a uh, discussion a kind of conclusion as such see so President John Un, um, condolences to his family, condolences to the beautiful country of North Korea, and condolences to all of those that uh, worked with him, worked under him, uh, to his administration. And like I said, you know, let's mourn the man first before we get into heavy politics before we start dealing with what's going to happen next. Let's let's mourn him first. All right. If we don't mourn this man, if we don't realize who he is and what he's done, 
uh, we're not going to notice the strengths that North Korea should capitalize on when choosing the next president. Uh, we're not going to focus on the weaknesses. Uh, if you ask me, I honestly believe that he had no weaknesses at his age, with that level of power, and at this point of time and in history, um, it, he couldn't afford to have any weaknesses. You got, you got Xi Jinping on one side, Putin on the other, Trump on the other. Good Lord. I mean, he, he couldn't have any weaknesses. So... Um, this is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. This is the level of uh, character that we're dealing with. He was a very good uh, gentleman and a uh, very good, remarkable president. And this is a big loss. This is a big loss. Um, I hope for the best for his family. I hope for the best for his country and um, yeah we I, I hope for the best I hope for the best um, whether good or bad comes out of this um, we, let's focus on that after we mourn the man um, like I said if we don't mourn this man if we don't if we don't pay homage, we're not going to be able to tell, we're not going to be able to identify if the next president that they bring in is going to be a lion or a snake. If he's going to be an eagle or a snake. We're not going to be able to tell. We have to pay homage to this gentleman first. Because we can see character we can see character flaws from someone from our own native country, and we can say that guy is no good. Get him out of here. But someone can have the same flaws in a different country, and because that country operates different, that might be a strength for them. And when dealing with your country, it might be a strength for you because they operate different. The soil's different over there. See? But, of course, we're not going to know that until the next president actually sits down with the other world uh, leaders. We're not going to know that until that happens. But we're most definitely not going to be able to recognize it if we don't pay homage to this gentleman and the legacy that he left. So, uh, condolences to his family, condolences to his beautiful country. And um, you know this is this this is a big loss, but I I have faith in North Korea. I think that they will get through this. Um, North Korea and America hasn't been on best terms as of late, but um, you know I hope that maybe this will bring maybe this will bring um, other world powers together. Maybe they'll maybe they'll pump the brakes and uh, realize that you know. Everyone, everyone needs to be thankful for what they have, and uh, anyone could get it. Anyone could get it. You know, we need to, we need to stay humble and understand that you know, uh, life is. No one's more political than life. No one's more gangster than life. You know. Uh, so, uh, best to everyone. Uh, blessings to all. Uh, God bless you all. And um, let's 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 get back to let's get back to faith. Let's get back to uh, prayer. Let's get back to hoping for the best. Let's better ourselves and let's uh, hope for the best for North Korea. Let's be there for them. No slander, no bullying, no trolling. Let's be there for them. All right. Take care. Stay wise.